Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny and welcome to The Bunny Show. This podcast platform is destined to speak about politics, pop culture, self-motivation, self-awareness, pretty much everything under the sun. I request that you come with your eyes, your mind, and your ears open when you listen to this podcast. I want to introduce myself once again. My name is Bunny. Relax when you listen to this show. And I don't know if you heard, and I don't know if you got the memo, but you're so not okay. Everyone seems to be doing fine, right? Everybody's okay, you know? Um, Or at least that's the picture that we all paint. We go to work, we go to school, or whatever your endeavors may be. Someone will ask you, how are you doing? And you say, well, I'm doing fine. Or you say, I'm doing okay. But what is the truth behind that? What are the things that keep you going? Some people will blame it solely on technology. Oh, it's social media. It's keeping us synced in. You have social media zombies, which is true. And technology, it has research results that show that it decreases our cognitive thinking. It decreases our human connectivity, the human intimacy. There's less and less time that's spent with those that we live with, that we love. And more of that time is going towards social media. So the cognitive thinking part, we depend less upon our thinking. What does this word mean? Or when was this established? The old-fashioned way, you would go to the library, you would look up a book, and then you would read it there. So to me, the technology part is, I have a question and I'm going to a source. So it's still the same dynamic, it's just more instant. And we have that access and we have that control right at our fingertips instead of getting several volumes of an encyclopedia or driving to a local library. With that being said, many people start to discuss more about mental health and it's got to be social media that's making people feel this way because on social media we see instant gratification we see people posting them going on vacation we see graduations we see I started a new business all of these positive things because who wants to post their failures I doubt it And people that do post their failures, it's not the same attention platform as in somebody that's just doing amazing, somebody that's just doing excellent. So for those of you that are painting this picture like everything's okay, you're not alone. You are not alone in this fog and confusion and thinking, how can I regain some sort of sanity Some people say, go on social media fasts. Make sure that you only allow yourself to go on social media so much, which is true and that can help. But the main source in making sure that your mental health is okay is control. I've taken social media fasts and to return back and I feel the anxiety instantly. You are constantly being fed images upon images and videos upon videos, even if you don't subscribe to them. So what is that telling you? That is telling you that you have more than you need. So if Facebook, Instagram, and all of these social media sites disappeared, what would happen? We would go back into another realm of someone else or something else doing cognitive thinking for us so what are you saying bunny what is what are you trying to get to that cognitive thinking is in your mind and understanding where information comes from 
If we depended on encyclopedias in the past, we trusted that source of, of, of information, right? If you're going on Google, you're trusting that source of information without question. Without question. Nowadays, people say, well, mm, that's got to be wrong. You can't depend on Google because the light bulbs are starting to go off and saying, why am I trusting in these particular sources to tell me facts? Then we have with the social media platform of seeing negative images we have fighting we have police brutality it seems like people of color see this negative imagery all the time that also gives post-traumatic stress if you're african-american you automatically whether you realize it or not are suffering from, from post-traumatic stress. I don't know if you realize that. We are becoming more and more desensitized to violence because it's being fed to us regularly. Almost to the point to where I even hear pe- people say, well, a cop had another murder. You know, that's the way things are. They won't do anything about it. The police officers won't go to jail. It is what it is. Which is complete mental defeat. And I think it is constant, constant rhetoric in our minds to desensitize desensitize the seriousness of it all. So when you see instant gratification, when you see constant violence... You reflect that and what is going on in your daily life. Everyone's on vacation, but I'm not. Everyone's doing bigger and better things concerning career, but I'm not. And we live in this delusional world of, that's just not me. That's just not my life. I'll just accept that. Swallowing it. Not even digesting it, but letting it live as a cyst or a cancerous substance in our body that continues to grow. Stress, anger, confusion, and even depression. So that's what's going on. So I don't think social media is to blame. But it is something that attributes to the way that we look at life. And I want you to say to yourself, if something's not right in your life, don't blame it on technology. Don't blame it on social media. You, you're so not okay. It's you. I hate to give you the answer that you don't want, but it's you. You have divine control and power over yourself so a little bit about me I used to do radio in college and I used to do radio a little bit afterwards some show I used to also partner with a best friend of mine uh, named Kina and we would talk about silly things and kind of have this release and it brought me great comfort because it was self-expression it was time to have fun it was time to laugh because we were able to take a break from our own realities and talk about any and everything one of the things that people don't ingest or don't do is we don't have hobbies there's this lie in life that's floating around making you think that if you're not where you want to be in life you're a failure you failed yourself But life, as you know it, you know this, is not a straight line. Nothing is perfect. Do not allow yourself to think that things happen overnight. The lie exists in your mind 
is all in your mind. And all of these things about mental health and getting help, which is true. You do need, one thing about technology is that it does bring us together. It's a default and a win at the same time. It gives us instant access. We can communicate with people all around the world instantly. But it does pull us apart, as I mentioned earlier. When was the last time you gave someone that you care about or you love a warm three to five second endearing hug when you said hello? A handshake, a smile, a nod. It may seem strange, but those things are becoming more and more and more non-existent. Even when somebody passes away, we'll send a text message instead of consoling that person. This is how life is evolving being in the technological world. So what can we do about that? You can admit that you're not okay. Admit that your life is not a straight line. There are several studies that show, especially with our fellow millennials, that they're in debt more than ever. Jobs are not available. And they have this pressure of social media and that things have to be perfect in their lives. And when they don't match that criteria, we have a generation of people that think they're failures. You do have that group that's on the cusp of the millennial group, the age rank. We see and others that are older see this shift occurring. What I love about millennials is that they are innovators. Even companies, Fortune 500, Fortune 100, they notice this. Less and less companies are developing their platforms to have pensions. Because nowadays, people say, well, why should I work for you for 20 or 30 years? And I don't even know if I'm going to be doing this. The ways of thinking have changed completely. My parents and older, you picked a craft, you perfected it, you stayed at a company 20, 30 years. That was your foundation. Your family grew around that. That was your bread and butter. And you were happy with that stability. But now with millennials and millennial thinkers, now the mindset is, why should I work with you? I'd rather have my own company. Why should I wait on you to give me a check? I'd rather make my own money. So we have innovative thinking, which is beautiful. But the disconnect from us and the elders is learning that things take time. Tell yourself you're not okay, and that's fine. You don't have to have everything figured out right now. Understand that. Once you understand that, then you have to move towards happiness and contentment. Usually people, when they hear contentment, they think settlement, but that's not what that means. Happiness... It's not what you see, it's what you feel and you acknowledge the contentment of where you are in your life. Perfect example, I want to lose 30 pounds, <laughs> okay? The contentment is, while I'm going through this process in my life of researching how to lose weight and what's best for me, I have to love myself in my current form. If I can't learn to do that and be happy and have some contentment of where I am now you have to reevaluate your thinking process because those two coincide together so that's the number one thing okay so admitting that you're not okay and it's okay to admit that you're not okay 
because majority of us aren't. We don't want to admit that things aren't peaches and cream. We don't want to admit we're not making the money that we don't want to make. We're uncomfortable with posting failures or talking about our failures because that's not the popular thing to do. Moving on. Evaluate who's around you and what's around you. Is that contributing or is it not contributing to you understanding yourself? Are you surrounded by friends that don't have motivation and drive for something? It's okay to admit that you outgrow certain friendships. That's a part of life. The more I get into what my career path is, my true passion, which is acting, writing, executive producing, I had to rearrange so many things in my life. So many things. And at times you feel like you're going, you you feel like you're going backwards because you said, wait a minute, we weren't going this way. But when you have that epiphany and saying, if I'm not okay, what's bothering me? And what's what was bothering me was I'm not doing what's making me happy. I'm doing what's making money and I'm doing what's allowing me to function in life, but I'm not not doing what makes me genuinely happy and excited i do have a platform on youtube profile name official bun underscore e and i review movies and television shows and i have a blast with that i have a little under 200 i think i'm at like at 193 subscribers you know and i look forward to the development in the process and learning the YouTube world and having fun with it but it was an outlet and that outlet continued to let me know acting is what you need to do this is what makes you happy and gives you a spark every day so let's go over and recap what we've talked about so far you're not okay and that's fine life is not a straight line evaluating and looking at what's going on around you Positive friendships, positive things that you see, that you do. That's so important. And understanding that the ways of thinking, it's changing. Work environments are changing. Everything is changing. Nothing under the sun is perfect. Depending on your spirituality, we have an understanding that, of course, blessings from God are perfect or things that happen in your life are perfect. I'm not denouncing that. But what I mean is your journey will not be perfect. And that's okay. If you are stressed out, if you are sad, it's okay to be that way. But the problem is sulking in it. The problem is being engulfed in it and drowning in lies and the lies of social media, the lies of what's really hurting mental health is the lie that everything has to be perfect. But I'm telling you, you're so not okay. And that's okay. So make those steps in order to make your life okay. I can right now go out and get a Tesla if I wanted to. I could. I can get a BMW and get a Mercedes. I can I can buy I can go get it right off the lot right now. I'm completely content and happy with my Toyota. It takes me $31 to fill the tank. <laughs> fill the tank. I'm chill with Not having a note, getting gas for cheap, and I have that understanding that true friends and true people that love me could care less about what I drive. So you have to understand that and accept that. There's pressure to be perfect. And if those around you don't understand that, then that's something that's in your way and that's creating you to not be okay. Let's talk about career for a moment. As I mentioned before, you know, I have several (laughs) accolades and degrees. I'm a science nerd. 
I've always been great at science. I graduated high school when I was 15, okay? Nerd. Proud nerd. Happy nerd. (laughs) All that time I knew I wanted to go into acting, writing, executive producing. I've known it forever. I used to always do little skits in front of my mom and act out characters that I saw and they live in color or anything that I saw and she would laugh. And I always had that passion to do that. But fear, not understanding how to get there or what to do, what to ask. You know, you you figure, go to college, get your education where there's nothing wrong with that. But I look back at it like, wow, if I just opened my heart and my mind to follow my dreams, then maybe my life would have been different. But there's danger in that. Thinking of the shoulda, coulda, wouldas. Uh-oh. What if I had done that? If only I had done this, my life would be completely different. You don't know that. (laughs) Understand that you don't know that. You don't know where life is taking you. Now, you're not a leaf blowing in the wind, right? We don't want that. We don't want your life twisting all about and you not having any direction or any foundation. Now, if that's going on in your life, get grounded and get focused on what makes you happy and if something is making you sad what is it exactly and be honest with yourself if I'm passionate about losing these 30 pounds I'll be passionate about the process until I'm passionate about the process and losing weight and doing what I need to do it won't happen those are facts consistency in what you want to do whether you're the best at it when you're consistent things will happen they have no choice to be inevitable if I go to the gym every day and work out eat healthy every single single day it's inevitable that the intake of calories and the burn outtake of what I've burned will burn fat scientific fact if there's not consistency if there's not dedication do not be disappointed do not be disappointed in your results let me say that again if you're not consistent if you're not on the right path do not be surprised at the results because the results won't magically change. Stop waiting on something or some miraculous thing to wave a magic wand and to make everything okay. You are the answer in being okay. Nobody is to blame with what your potential is or who you can be but you. And when I discovered that, I got sad, y'all. My eyes got watery and I thought, Wow. Acceptance, self-awareness. And I thought, what can I do to stop toxic thinking? It, It won't be easy. It won't be easy. It's a process. Understand that. What you have the power to change can be changed I would love for it to be 70 degrees cool breeze all day every day guess what I cannot control that at all it's not in my control so think about what you have control over another thing with career you can do any and everything to prepare what you think your career can be or what it can do but you don't have control over that either your company could tank next week for all we know you can save your money and keep it locked up and to the side and think you can prepare for who knows what I'm here to break it to you it's okay to prepare and it's okay to think about the shoulda, coulda, wouldas and let me do this and do that but nothing, nothing 
in this world is guaranteed but death that's what's guaranteed what's guaranteed is life continues and it moves on no matter what happens if I have a family member I have a catastrophe or a traumatic experience in my life what makes life hard is that the world does not stop for me for you for anybody time goes forward So with that being said, I hear you. You're not alone. You're not okay. And I'm not okay. Now, for those of you who are saying, it's my season. My life is great. I have a career. I have love. And that's beautiful. That's amazing. And I'm happy for you. And I hope that continues for as long as it can. And I'm so happy and I love seeing people happy and I love seeing people prosper and I love, I love seeing people happy. That's one of the things that I have to work on is that I love putting so much time into so many other people. But when it came to me, I didn't think I was worthy to be happy. I didn't think I was worthy for things to evolve and be so beautiful because I wasn't used to that. Toxic thinking. Are you your worst enemy? Of course you are. Of course. That's okay, because guess what? You're human. You are a human being. You are an imperfect creature. But that's what makes you so beautiful, and that's what makes you so awesome. It's not a straight line. Make those steps in understanding that social media... Is entertainment. Did you forget that? It's not a progress report on how you're doing in your life. It shouldn't be. But it is. People are using that to say, look at my life. I'm doing this. One week I was in India. Another week that I was in Mexico. And, th- and that's great. But if you feel that it's putting a burden on your life and you have negative energy from that, guess what? You have to step aside and understand That's their journey, that's their life, and not yours. But that hasn't been taught to people who use social media. Anything opposite of perfection can make you feel like crap, (laughs) like you're a failure and what have I done with my life? If you're not where you want to be, you have the power to change that. And I want you to do that. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. You're so not okay. You so need to cry. You so need to yell. You so need to say, this is my fault and I need to make this right. That's what you need to do. That is the awakening. That's the purpose of this episode of You're So Not Okay. And letting you know that social media technology it's not to blame it's your thought process and that you dove into the commercial of things being perfect I also want to express that the world that we live in marketing and money marketing and money the american way is to spend 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 and if you don't have it if you haven't got this the marketing is you're behind just think of the reaction if somebody saw you with an iphone 4 or 5 they'd be like why you got that phone you still got that phone why you upgraded at least to the 6 or the 8 why you got that That's the world that we live in. You have to keep up with the times. And when you don't keep up with the times and when you can't do this and you can't do that, that can affect mental health. That can affect your behavior. That can that has that has things on you that that deal with post-traumatic stress, violence, racial tension. Those are the things that are making you not okay. Racism in America is alive and well. 
what makes it continue, what makes cognitive thinking slowly diminish is intimacy with us being human beings. Intimacy in viewing that something's not wrong and not actually physically doing anything about it. So let me know what you think. I hope that you guys in, liked this introduction to The Bunny Show. I will have guests that come on this platform and we'll talk about different things. But I just wanted you to just to get a nice recap that how I was feeling and what I noticed to go on around me. Make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, profile name official bun underscore E. That's spelled official B as in boy, U N N underscore E as in Edward, where I review and recap movies and television series. And I talk about things from a cinematic perspective and understanding the writers and the actors, etc. Have a really good time on that. And also follow me on Instagram, same profile name, official bun underscore E. Let me know what you think. We'll come back. And I also introduce meditation. Well, we will have meditation sessions and learning how to meditate. The introductions to meditation and freeing your mind and freeing your way of thinking and even changing your way of thinking. Before we leave, we have a quick advertisement from a sponsor. God bless each and every one of you. If you don't believe in God, I hope that your entity in life and connection with the universe continues to prosper and grow. Talk to you guys later. Next, you'll hear a message from the sponsorship. Check you guys later. Bye. Hey, you guys, it's your girl, Bunny. So there's this creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple, and many more. You can even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Believe me, it's super easy to use and it's free. I mean, what's the best than being free. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Once again, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Until next time, my people, take care.